calculate the magnitude of the electric field at x let's go ahead and take a look at that so 7.1 p is a two nanocolumns point charge as we can clearly see right x is a 0.6 centimeters away from charge p as shown in the diagram below we just want the magnitude of the electric field at x it should be an easy equation to answer so 7.1 e is equals to k q divided by r squared so k is 9 times 10 to the power 9 right is a constant but because i'm writing the final exam and i don't want to make any mistake i will actually verify on the formula sheet right because what if it's minus 9 well it is still plus 9 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the charge of p it is 2 times 10 to the minus 9 not minus 6 right and then divided by r squared which is in centimeters so we need to convert to meters so in a one meter we have a hundred centimeters so we divide by hundred and we square that now i just need to press my calculator so nine times ten to the power nine multiplied by two times ten to the minus nine six over hundred and we square that i get five thousand so we have five thousand what is the si unit we know that e is equals to f over q right so the si unit is newtons per column that is 7.1 let's take a look at 7.2 point s with a charge of minus 2 nanocolumn is placed four centimeters away or to the right of charge p as shown in the diagram below draw a resultant electric field pattern due to charges p and s okay so p is positive s is negative okay so they will attract so what are we expecting uh let me just do that again we're expecting the charges well not the charges but the field lines to be pointing away from charge p and pointing towards charge s as s is negative right and then let's just go ahead and have some more field lines right so they're pointing towards the positive sphere and they point away at the negative sphere right so we have something like this yeah actually um P is positive and S is negative. We expect the full lines to point away from P, right? Because it is positive and point towards S because it is uh, negative. Okay, so let me just write that nicely. So these charges are supposed to point away from P. Let me just add all the field lines that i'm gonna use here and then i'll worry about the direction after right so the field lines are pointing away from the positive sphere so this is what away looks like the point away from the positive sphere and then the negative sphere the point towards the center right the point towards the negative sphere so the positive sphere away and then from the negative sphere's point of view it is towards so this is what we're supposed to have for 7.2 right um 7.3 7.3.1 we're supposed to define columns law so i'm gonna leave that to you right uh, the square distance between the charges not uh, between um, between them not between their centers when it comes to columns law we don't say between the centers that is gravitational Law. so if you did say between the centers here yeah, when you at the end of the definition that is wrong it's not between the centers it's just between the charges right we don't talk about the center of a charge here so that is 7.3.2 or oh, 7.3.1 i mean and then 7.3.2 what is the polarity of charge t choose from positive or negative let's go through the question statement and see what is happening a third point charge t is placed two centimeters to the right of s as shown in the diagram below point charge t experiences a net electric field force of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons to the left okay 
to the left. And then we're supposed to figure out whether it is positive or negative. So let's take a look at the two cases where it is positive, right? And where it is negative. Okay. So if it is positive, S and T will be attracting, right? So this will be the force as a consequence of S because S and T will be attracting. But what about the force as a consequence of P? P and S have the same magnitude. But because P is so far away, we expect the vector to be smaller. We ex uh, expect the magnitude of the force as a result of P to be smaller. This is if T is positive, right? Let's take a look at it when T is negative. If T is negative, this will be uh, the force as a result of S because they will be repelling each other. But because P has the same magnitude as S and is far away, this will be this makes sense to be the force as a result of uh, P, right? So in this case, when we look at our situation, what do we have? We know that the net electric force is to the left, right? So it means that at T, we have a positive charge because the resultant is to the left when T is positive. As you can clearly see here that Fs would be greater than, here Fs would be greater than F. P. So we, it is easy to see that at point T, we should have a positive charge, positive charge, right? Because if it is positive, then the net electric will be to the left. And then 7.3.3, we are supposed to actually calculate the magnitude of charge T. Let's go ahead and do that. So F net will be equals to, this is our scenario, right? We are basing everything on this scenario. So Fs will be equals to... Fs minus Fp. I'm taking direction to the left is positive here, right? So what is F net? F net is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. What is Fs? Fs is going to be, we'll know fully well that F is equal to k, q1, q2 over r squared, right? And we want the charge at t. So Fs is going to be 9 times 10 to the power 9, the magnitude of the charge s, 2 times 10 to the minus 9 multiplied by qt everything divided by the distance between s and t it is two centimeters so two over 100 converting it to meters squared right and then minus 9 times 10 to the power 9 2 times 10 to the minus 9 that is the charge of p right magnitude of the charge rather and then we have qt divided by the distance between the two spheres so it is 4 plus 6, uh, 4 plus 2, which is 6. So we have 6 divided by 100 squared, right? So if we take a QT as a common factor on the, on the right-hand side, we're going to have 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 being equals to, let me just make this a little bit bigger, right? Being equals to, so I'm taking QT as a common factor, right? So we are going to be left with, 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 2 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 2 over 100 squared minus 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 2 times 10 to the minus 9. Everything divided by 6, oh, 6 over 100, 6 over 100 squared. If we divide both sides by this coefficient of QT, we get QT being equals to 6.25 times 10 to the minus 9 columns. There we go.